The wedding rite presented in this film is a part of the tradition of the Lubinje villages, Upper Gorinje and Lower Donje Lubinje, situated on the massive slopes of the Shar mountain, near the city of Prizren and on the border with the FYR of former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. The inhabitants belong to the originally Christian minority groups who converted to Islam during the Ottoman period in the Balkans. They are known by several eponyms, Nashinsi, which literally means our people, or Goranci, inhabiting the Gora area of Kosovo, Torbeshi, inhabiting the northwest part of the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, and Pomaks, inhabiting the Rodop mountains of Bulgaria. They have their own language, albeit only in spoken form, with a mixture of Slavic dialects and old Turkish words used for expression of traditional items. One of the most characteristic wedding customs of the population of the Lubinje villages, the preparation of the bride for her wedding day, was presented by one of the last bearers of this tradition, Ms. Aziza Shefiragic, a 64-year-old woman from the village of Lower Donje Lubinje. The rite is comprised of two parts, the dressing of the bride and bridal face painting. Most of the elements of the traditional bride's wedding costume are woven works of art in silk, cotton, and wool. The prevailing color of the layered costume decoration is blue. The motives are blue, violet, and green flowers connected in sequence, simulating the flora of the surrounding environment. Detailed pearl and beaded flowers are attached to the hem of the headscarf. The pieces of the bridal wedding costume, made by the practitioner herself, are dressed in the following order. Charape, or socks, made of wool or cotton, with floral decoration made with surma, a type of golden silk thread. Shar, or panties, made of cotton and also decorated with floral motives. Fustan, a skirt worn as a first layer of the costume, made of pleated white silk. Puas, a decorated woven belt. Anteria, a woven overcoat. Mintan, an overcoat made of silk. Elek, an embroidered vest. Two pieces of this item are layered, one over the other. The first is named Archilia Chun Elek, black vest, made of wool, buttoned in front. A second is a decorated vest with surma. The decorated silken headscarf is placed on the bride after her face has been painted. The origin of painting the bride's face dates from before living memory. As Ms. Shafiragic explained, in the past the bride's face was painted twice. The first painting ritual was made in the house of the bride, early in the morning of the wedding day, by a skilled woman, usually a member of the bride's family. The second face painting was done in the house of the groom, by a groom's skilled female relative, one or two days after the wedding day. Today, the bridal face painting is only performed in the house of the bride's family, before the wedding ceremony. As the tradition passed from one generation to the next, Ms. Shafiragic was taught by her mother-in-law. She is one of two women in the area still practicing this tradition. The decorative mask on the face of the bride is related to the belief that the bride should not be recognized by anyone outside of her family during the wedding day to prevent bad luck until the forthcoming wedding ceremony, protecting her from the evil eye. The mask is a sign of the young woman's new status, which should not be damaged in the first days of her presentation to the public and to the groom's family, when all eyes are on her. The process takes nearly two hours. It starts with the whitening of the bride's face, using a primitive tool, a kind of wire called tel from Turkish. The practitioner draws ornaments in different forms and colors on the face of the bride a decoration with oblique golden lines, named kosnitsa or mechka, is painted on one side of the face, starting from the brow. Identical decoration is applied on the other side of the face, starting from the same point. 
The space between the oblique golden lines is filled with blue and red dots. The cheeks and the chin are painted with circles colored with red and blue lines and gold in the middle. A blue painted dot framed with colored beads called asprinke or shlokitze is applied in the center of the circle associated with the symbol of a protective eye. The final phase of the bride's face painting process is concentrated on the decoration of the bride's eyebrows. An egg white is spread over the eyebrows as an adhesive for the applied beads, named tatrinki, in blue and silver, following the form of the eyebrow. The final part of the process is decoration of the headpieces. On the headscarf, mavez, which is usually made in red, a crown or a tiara, perisha, is embroidered with pearls in floral forms, named kuchke. The jewelry for the bride's neck and ears is made of pearls and beads in different floral forms. Then, the bride leaves the house of her parents and, accompanied by a close male relative, is presented to the public. As an artistic expression of a specific community belief, this rite is an example of the creativity of many generations that deserve to be passed on to preserve the memory and the attractiveness of the unique rite. With the presentation of this tradition of the Lower Donye Lubinye village, we would like to facilitate the continuation of this endangered practice. In that respect, the willingness of Ms. Shafiragic to share her knowledge and skills should be supported by the responsible entities for promotion of the cultural diversity of the population in Kosovo. Ja sam od ovde iz selo Šefita Gitazisa. Se zanimam za ova tradicija. Hoću nešto da mi ostane posle mene neko da me spomenja. Mene mi je čevtio da obučem neka ostane ta tradicija za uvek. Mi je čevtio da da ne se uništi te. Neka ima i dalje još.